And so number 17, the last question in the 2016 Advanced Iron Mathematics of Mechanics. Here we go, a little pendulum, circular motion then. Hey, well, there's a description first of all that just describes it. An extensible string, no stretching in it, of length r, a mass m. It's given the initial velocity from the equilibrium position of u meters per second. You have to show that after it's moved through an angle of theta, the tension here is given by this expression for four marks. Well, by the time it gets to here, it won't have the same initial velocity. That velocity will have dropped by a certain amount. But having this velocity and being constrained to turn in a circle must mean there's a force that has to be exerted on it that will give you part of the tension in order to sustain that velocity. But as well as that, maybe I'll put the velocity out of the way over here, there's also a component of its weight which also has to be sustained by the tension. So there'll be two parts there then. Weight of this object, mg. The component along the direction there, because that'll be theta, will be mg cos, because it's beside the angle, theta. So the tension in the string will have to support that, as well as providing the acceleration, the centripetal acceleration. What will the velocity be by the time it gets to here, given that it's still moving, it's been given enough velocity to begin with? Well, conservation of energy here. How much energy did it have to begin with? What was the initial energy? The initial energy was purely kinetic, and that's a half mu squared. What's its energy here? We'll call that the final energy for that part there. It'll be part kinetic, as long as it's still moving, so that's a half mv squared, and part the gain in, kinet in potential energy, which will be mg, we'll call that delta h. How much has it risen by? Well, how much has it risen then? So if that's the amount it's risen by, this portion is r cos theta, so I can say just pull this down. A half mu squared will be a half mv squared plus mg times, and this increase in height here, this part here, will be the original radius minus, so it's r minus, r, and that's beside the angle, cos theta. So I'll just rearrange that, noticing that all the m's will cancel out, and doubling it at the same time, and I'll have this, I'll have v squared equals u squared, taking that across of course, because remember what I'm doing is I'm reading this backwards, minus that 2 would multiply it, 2g, I'll take that r out, 1 minus cos theta. Now from this you can find that acceleration, that means the centripetal acceleration which is equal to v, whoops, which is equal to v squared upon r, will be this upon r, so that will be equal to u squared upon r minus 2g, now that r disappears, times 1 minus cos theta. And then I can put the two parts together to get the tension. The tension has to provide two things. It's got to provide the centripetal, the force for the centripetal acceleration, so ma, and it's got to support that component of the weight plus mg cos theta. So you put that together then, so the tension is going to be given by mass times all of this, so that will be m u squared upon r minus 2 m g times 1 minus cos theta, plus another m g cos theta. So t will be m u squared upon r. Now that's only going to affect this part of it inside, but maybe I'll split it up first. That's another line for almost for nothing, so it's minus 2mg, but plus 2, plus another one, which makes plus 3mg cos theta. Now I'll put it back together. mu squared upon r, mg is a common factor, plus mg times, and that'll be 3 cos theta minus 2. There was one mark for establishing the energy at the two points, and then... One mark for putting those two together, and then one mark for getting this, and then one mark for all of that. That just doesn't really make sense, does it? Because that must be worth a mark, that's the way it actually works. The rest is a substitution. 
uh, I give anyone the marks on this one, I don't know how they've, they've worked out their four, how they've plopped them about, because I would have thought the critical things would have been using the conservation of energy, about some of the kinetic energy translating into potential energy. The second part would have been, I thought, getting the centripetal acceleration from that new velocity. The third mark would have been realising the tension's got to support that centripetal acceleration and support the component of the weight. And then the fourth mark would have been for tidying, putting it all together and tidying it up, I would have thought. Anyway, that's part A. Or rather, that was A part one for those two four marks. This next part, part two, says, determine a condition for you in terms of G and R, so the particle actually makes it through a complete circle. Well, make, through, make it through a complete circle so long as it's still got some velocity at the top, so long as the velocity of the top isn't zero, or alternatively, so long as there's some, still some tension in the string by the time it gets to the top. So the condition here would have to be there's still some tension in the string when the angle gets to 180 degrees would be the simpler way because then you could just use this equation directly instead of having to think of what the velocity would need to be because then you can just pop that in so t greater than zero means m u squared over r plus m g times three cos 180 minus two has to be greater than zero so knowing that's worth a mark now it's just a case of working this out. Now the cosine of 180 is negative 1. Just think of the cosine graph. So that comes to negative 5. So if you take that over, the next, and the m's would then count, I'll just put it down. mu squared upon r would equal, now that's negative 5, so it would equal 5mg. So u squared is going to be 5m's cancel gr. So u is going to be 5 root gr. It's not going to be. It has to be more than that to be able to get round the top. Now part B for three marks. <clears throat> Given the value of u isn't as much as that, that it's only two root gr. Now that means it's not going to make it to the top then because it has to exceed that to get round the top. So it just says how far up would it get before it stops? I'll stop with the tension zero. So that means substituting it into that, m times, now that squared would be 4gr over r plus mg times 3 cos theta minus 2 should equal zero. Now there's a common, to solve this equation, we'll just factorise it. There's a common factor here of mg. Take out mg, remember the r goes, and you're just left with I'll put it down, I'll put it all down first of all. 4 plus 3 cos theta minus 2, I'll tidy up more. mg times 3 cos theta plus 2 should be 0. And if two things multiply to give 0, either one of them 0. But the mass isn't 0, and g certainly isn't 0. So the only thing that can be 0 is this, which means that 3, oops, which means cos theta equals negative 2 thirds. So you know it's got more than a quarter of the way, because that's more than 90 degrees. And then, since you don't actually know this length, we had an expression for that height. That height was given by r times 1 minus cos theta. So that means the height it will get to is r times 1 minus, and that's a negative, so 1 plus 2 thirds. So the height's going to be 5 thirds, 5 upon 3 times the radius. And there it is. And there were three marks here. The first part was for realising it'll stop when the tension gets to zero. That was a mark. Solve that equation to get cos theta's negative two thirds. That's a mark. And then pop it back in to find the height or an expression for the height. There's the three marks. And that's question 17 finished. And that's the whole paper done.